Here's what happens to your body if somehow you find yourself exposed to outer space. Number nine, extreme swelling. You know that really important thing that makes up around 70% of our bodies and everyone says we should drink more of? Yeah, I'm talking about water. The elixir of all life on Earth. Pay attention to the Earth part, because if you ever end up in space without a protective suit on, then the water, which makes up 70% of your body, basically turns against you and makes your life pretty damn miserable. But hey, don't take it personally, it's not you, it's the atmospheric pressure. As you might know, there's zero pressure in space and it's a bad thing for everyone involved. Without the atmospheric pressure, water will quickly start converting into vapor, meaning that all the moisture from your eyes, mouth, and nose will start to change to vapor and that's what's causing the expansion within your body. Basically, anything that has moisture is going to be expanding. All the water from all your organs, muscles, and soft tissue in your body will be vaporizing causing you to double up in size in minutes. But did you just think you're just gonna explode and have your misery be put to an end quickly? <laughs> nope, because your skin's got you covered. Our skin is so flexible, it'll stretch and bruise, but it won't break, which is kind of a double-edged sword since it's keeping you alive, but I'd imagine it'd be super painful. Number eight, ebulism. Remember the vapor and swelling thing we just talked about? It turns out that the swelling is one of the first symptoms of ebulism and one of the signs that things will get really bad really fast. In case you're not familiar with the term, ebulism is the formation of gas bubbles in your bodily fluids as a result of reduced environmental pressure. This isn't the same thing with embolism, though it can lead to it. Embolism is the obstruction of the arteries in the body because of blood clots or air bubbles. Just in case you're wondering, yes, it's extremely painful. So basically, after you swell and embolism takes over, your blood will get enriched with bubbles, which prevents normal blood circulation. Since blood can't circulate around, I got some more of, well, you guessed it, bad news. Oxygen won't reach your organs and tissue, both of which start dying slowly. Not that there's much oxygen in space anyways, but that's a completely different topic. Ebolism is the most severe part of exposure to outer space. Technically, ebolism begins at an elevation of around 12 miles above the Earth's surface, or basically at pressures less than 6.3 kilopascals, which is also known as the Armstrong limit. Anyways, even first graders know that if the brain doesn't get the amount of oxygen it needs to operate, then your whole body is in for a collapse and death is inevitable. The good news is that if there's some other space cowboy up there with you and he or she manages to save you quickly enough, you might get a chance to recompress. But the thing is, you basically only have 90 seconds to be recompressed. Number seven, radiation. I'm pretty sure that we all know radiation is a bad thing even here on Earth. I mean, we just don't see people fighting over plots uh, over there in Chernobyl, right? Well, in space, it's kind of the same. Chernobyl? That's a piece of cake compared to the radiation you'll end up being exposed to while in space. Even in the extremely unlikely turn of events where you'd end up surviving your unprotected, and I hope unplanned, plunge into outer space, the radiation coming from the deep, dark places of the universe will get to you sooner or later. The thing why radiation is so dangerous is because it goes straight into your cells and it alters your DNA. Even if you have your suit on, don't think you're fully protected. Astronauts come back from space radiated. Just think what happens without having a suit on. Gamma rays, x-rays, and energized protons are just some of the dangerous things that your body's exposed to. These rays and particles can permanently denature DNA and other cellular molecules through atomic and nuclear interactions. Prolonged exposure and the ability of X and gamma photons to penetrate the entire body can cause death because of organ failure, while even short-term exposure can cause your body to get cancer. I think the worst thing is that you might be struggling with the symptoms of radiation poisoning for years on end. I'd rather just go quickly if I had a choice. Also, radiation mutation is another common thing that might happen, and we're not talking about any good mutations here. Number six, saliva boiling. 
And now we're back to bodily fluids acting up weirdly while being exposed to outer space. And you thought Australia was a tough place to be. Anyways, back in 1966, NASA was doing decompression testing at the Johnson Space Center when one of the astronauts participating in the test lost consciousness after approximately 15 seconds of being accidentally depressurized in a ground-based depressurization chamber. Amazingly, he managed to remain conscious for 14 of those 15 seconds, just in time for his brain to get a taste of that unoxygenated blood. Luckily for him, someone noticed him in this shitty situation, and they started repressurizing the chamber. So, after this guy regained consciousness, he said that the last thing he remembered was his own saliva boiling. That just sounds insane to me. Well, that's definitely an experience that not many people can say they've had. Number 5. Sunlight Exposure No matter where you are, spending a day outside in the sun right in the middle of summer without sunscreen isn't a great idea. However, you can thank our ozone layer for protecting us a whole lot, meaning that even though you might have forgotten to put on that sunscreen to do your best impression of the dudes from Jersey Shore, your skin isn't actually going to fry off. Now imagine what it would be like to spend just a few minutes in outer space without the ozone layer to filter out dangerous UV rays, and I'd imagine some other rays that science probably doesn't even know about. Every inch of exposed skin would just be burnt. I'd imagine the entire experience would probably feel like someone blowtorching your skin. And let's not even think about looking directly at the sun. If you think looking directly at the sun is something of an option, I guess frying your retinas is on your list of things to do. The only good thing I can find here is that at least you'll go blind and won't be able to see what's going to happen to your body. Actually, that's just painful. Number four, loss of blood pressure. Keeping your blood pressure normal, or at least not too high, is a good thing. That's if you're on planet Earth, I mean. It turns out that when you're in space, things can get a bit too low. Really low, actually. Since your body will pretty much lose its normal shape, it only comes natural, well, as natural as outer space can feel, I guess, that your veins will lose their primary shape. Your heart is able to pump blood through your veins because they're small. As you might expect, if veins start swelling up and getting much bigger, then we've got a big problem. Your heart simply just wouldn't be able to pump any blood effectively through your body, which basically means you can't regulate your blood pressure. And then again, with things going downhill so fast, this is probably one of the last problems that you'd worry about. But hey, I'm just saying, your heart isn't going to be able to regulate your blood pressure. Number three, accelerated cooling. Accelerated body cooling, otherwise known as freezing, is another thing to expect once you're out of your protective spacesuit. But don't expect anything like what you've seen in the movies, where people freeze and become ice cubes the second they're out in space. The freezing doesn't happen because of the sub-zero temperatures in space. The least severe of all these symptoms supposedly is the freezing of bodily secretions because of evaporative cooling. Uh, everything I've described so far sounds horrific, but I guess this one is the least horrific? You know, your body cools down by sweating. Sweat drops appear on the surface of your skin and then slowly evaporate from your body, leaving you feeling cooler. The air we have on Earth has some level of humidity in it, meaning that sweat won't be evaporating too fast into the air. The problem is that when you present moisture in an environment that has zero humidity in it, the evaporative effect is greatly exaggerated. Basically, as soon as you present moisture in a zero moisture environment, you're going to have that area frost over. As the moisture evaporates from the surface of the skin, it uses up heat energy and causes a cooling effect. Anywhere on your body that has moisture, your eyes, mouth, nose, and yes, your lungs, will pretty much freeze over as a result. That's a sensation I don't need to experience either. Number two, hypoxia. At number two on this list is hypoxia. Hypoxia means oxygen deficiency, and it's as bad as you can imagine it to be. Suffering from hypoxia in space will kill you, and it's actually not because of a lack of oxygen in the vacuum in space. You know how there's a gas exchange process going on in the lungs? For those of you who don't remember, think about the thing we learned roughly around 7th grade or so, where you saw little pictures of blood cells drawn as cartoon characters passing each other oxygen molecules and so on. 
Well, those little cells won't be able to do their job in space since there's no air pressure. This renders your cardiovascular system useless and no oxygen will be delivered to your muscles or vital organs. What's even worse, the whole process will actually start reversing because of the lack of air pressure and oxygen will start escaping your body. All of your organs will be oxygen deprived, which is never a good thing to say the least. Because of what's happening, at least your senses will be affected so maybe things won't feel as horrific. Oh, also, your judgment will most likely be impaired. Since hypoxia kind of cripples your entire cardiovascular system, your skin will start turning blue, which is a sign that your entire body is suffocating. Apparently, you have around uh, 10 seconds before you go completely unconscious, but losing your consciousness is probably a good thing in this circumstance. Number one, explosive decompression. For all of you out there who can hold your breath for minutes on end, listen to this one. That's actually one of the worst things you can do when and if you're ever exposed to outer space. Your natural instinct is to probably open your mouth and take one last deep breath and hold it as much as possible. The problem is this extra gulp of air doesn't help you survive at all. Apparently, taking one last gulp of air is one of the worst things you can do. You'll end up with the opposite effect of what you're looking to do. Remember, your body can't use that oxygen anyways at that pressure. Holding your breath while being in space will result in explosive decompression, which is actually much worse than it sounds. Basically what happens is your lungs rupture and you die. That happens because air has a tendency to expand dramatically in environments with no pressure. Your lungs will start expanding the similar way to balloons. And what do you do when you get a bit carried away blowing up a balloon? You let some of the air out so it doesn't burst. So if you ever find yourself in this situation, you need to exhale as much air as you can as soon as possible. It might not seem like it would help much, but hey, every little thing helps when you're in such a dire situation. Here's what's next. We said that space affects muscles and causes muscle loss. Well, that goes for all of the muscles, including the muscles on your belly and nether regions. Muscle loss around the abdomen won't only mean that your beloved six-pack is MIA, but also that you have less of an ability to stop that natural...